Hush. What's up guys, Dark Burst here. Gonna be doing a video on the Montero today. We're gonna be replacing the rear pads and rotors. And here we go. All right guys, sorry for the background noise. I guess there's some construction going on up in the houses down the street. But I got a set of power stop brakes, aftermarket Montero. It's all the slotted rotors and carbon fiber brake pads. So yeah, these are gonna be awesome. I also bought a set for the front, which I'll be doing a separate video on that. This video, I'm just going to be doing the rears. Alright, power stop carbon fiber brake pads. And I have the rotors in here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes. Should be a set of two. Yeah, there's another one here. Alright, so, so let's get them in. Alright, so first things first, we're going to crack loose all the nuts before jacking the rear end up and yeah, then we can get to work from there. it up we can finish removing the rest of the bolts all the way and I know what you're thinking guys I have a stud missing here but I got the truck like that it's gonna get it fixed eventually but you know got priority so gotta make it work for now All right, so I'm already starting to out the slide pins. I already got one of them out. Um, so uh, take take these out. I would try to get a get my phone in here, but I don't have my uh, low mount, a low foam mount to get it. But yeah, just unbolt these, and then we're gonna unbolt the whole caliber and get that out of the way. And this one kind of looks like it's seized up because these are pretty dry. Pretty dry. Yeah, this one looks like it's not really moving. It's stuck in there, seized up. Probably why my brakes are grinding. So, those slide bolts actually were holding the caliper in. So, just pop it off. And then, wow. Definitely some uneven wear. This pad still has a lot of life on it. This one just is gone down to metal and it's definitely because it's caliper die pins we're gonna prop this up so we can remove the the rotor and then we'll replace the pads all right so right after you get the calipers off there's these two threads here that's a 12 millimeter bolt that you can use to remove the, the rotor because you know the rotor should be able to slide off but since it's corroded into the hub that we just have to use two or one 12 millimeter bolts about like a couple inches long and then bolt it in to pop the uh, rotor out all right so we got the bolt in metal on this rotor because I hope I don't have to replace these calipers but I have to make do with what I got so yeah all right so I cleaned off some of the rust and the shavings that were left on the brakes we're gonna clean off the new rotor with a uh, brake parts cleaner and all right do a quick spray down um the rotor so all the oil it comes from the factory come off All 
right, we're gonna get the new rotor on. Oh, ho, ho. nice. That looks good. Way better than the old rusty one. Okay, so gotta order new calipers only because I had uneven wear on this on the passenger side. It's bare metal for this pad. This pad is still good, but the driver's side rear is the exact same thing and it's got major uneven wear. So I'm pretty sure these calipers are bad. They're pretty rusted. The bushing is torn on this one and the guy pins are locked up. Um, I could just rebuild it, but I don't really feel like it. And I can just get new calipers for like 50, 60 bucks and call it a day. So there's gonna be a little pause on this, but once the new calipers come in, then I will continue the repair. All right, flash forward to the new calipers coming in. Eventually. All right guys, two weeks later, finally got the parts in. Got the new calipers for the rear. Um, I know some people are gonna say that, oh, that my calipers are fine, but it was a pain to get the, um, the pins for the brake pads out because they were just so seized and my pistons like is rusted out and the boot had a big tear in it when I, you know, you could see it before I pushed it in. And um, these uh, guide pins for the caliper bolts are pretty seized as well. And I tried to knock them loose, but they're not really budging. So I figured, you know, since brand new calipers cost 50 bucks, instead of just trying to rebuild this one to just get new ones on. So let's get these out. All right, so I got a new set of calipers that are bracketed. So we had to remove the old bracket, which are, which the bolts for those are right next to the guide pin bolts. So it's this one down here and then this one up here. So we'll go ahead and remove those. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove those bracket bolts. Definitely gotta use a breaker bar for these because these are seized on there pretty good. Right now that we got that broken loose, we are going to take it off completely. Second bolt out for the bracket. So now it just had it comes out as one piece. So here's the bracket for the caliper, and then this is the whole caliper in general. So we're just gonna replace this whole thing. Um, and yeah. All right, guys. So we got the new or the old caliper sitting up on these boxes. We're gonna position the rotor on the hub, and then we're going to then position the new caliper in the place. So when we disconnect the brake line from the old caliper to the new one, there will be less of a mess and it will just be an easy transfer. This is the new caliper that we're gonna be throwing on. It's got new bolts. The only bolts that you have to reuse are the bracket bolts. Other than that, the guide pins are all there and yeah, it's already pre-greased and ready to go. Everything moves. We're gonna throw this baby on. <laughs> Make sure you clean everything before throwing everything on just so it gets put on a clean surface. So clean the hub off and then clean the connections for the bracket. So yeah. Make sure you put on a, a lug just so that it holds the rotor in place while you're putting on a new caliper just to prevent from moving off of the hub. All right, so before we put on the new caliper on, we're gonna put a medium strength thread locker on it just so these bolts don't vibrate off. It's good to torque them down too, if you know the torque spikes. I'll look them up later. I am no mechanic. I just look up how to do these things and then I share my experiences with you guys on how to do this. Because honestly, I know there's a decent following for Montero stuff, but there's barely any repair videos on Montero's. Not enough love for them.
Now we got the new caliper on. We're going to remove the brake hose from the old caliper and transfer that to the new one. So it takes a 17 millimeter wrench. I'm just gonna crack it open. It is gonna get a bit messy, so just be prepared. All right, so we got the hose off, uh, the brake hose, um, but it was easier to keep the old caliper on the uh, bolted onto the hub just because the brake hose was seized. It's pretty rusted, so we just broke it loose. Then we, you know, disconnected the hose from the old caliper, and then we connected it to the new caliper, but we had to turn the caliper because otherwise the hose would just keep spinning and turning and it would just tangle up the brake hose. So once we finally got it on, we put the new caliper back on, bolted it on, and then finished tightening the brake hose. And so next thing we gotta do is to uh, put the new pads and the new hardware in, and then we're good. Okay, so now that we got the caliper on, brake hose is on, we are going to start putting the pads and hardware in. So, here are the brake pad pins. They're just gonna remove real quick. And then we are gonna slide the pads and make sure you, you grease them, grease the pads. So anywhere that there's metal, uh, metal contact, you're gonna wanna grease it just so nothing gets seized up and nothing gets locked in place. We're gonna use the power stop grease that came with the hardware and the pads. So we're gonna grease the back of this pad. Spread that over. Anywhere there's metal on metal contact just so that nothing gets seized. Slide that in. Then we're gonna get the other one. So this uh, little tab here is an indicator for when you change your brake pads. So when the pad gets worn out, the metal tab on the pad will rub up on the rotor. And when you hear that squeaking sound, that's when you know it's time to change your pads. And that'll save your rotors. And I definitely want to save these rotors because these are worth a pretty penny. Okay, we're gonna put this one in. Right now we're gonna put the pins back into place. All right, so I did things off camera just because trying to figure out the hardware and where it's placed. But I think this is what I got. You can say in the comments otherwise if I got it wrong. You get the two uh, pins in right here. And then you have to put one this clip on this side to hold this pad in place and then this w clip you pretty much so for for this clip there's two holes they had to align it to uh into the pins and that's how it stays in um so the hole up here hold on here it's got multiple holes depending on what kind of caliper you got and this w clip it goes in from underneath this clip or this pin and then you pretty much just squeeze the the two sides together and fit them into the holes right here of the pads. And then for this clip, this is the dumbest clip ever. I honestly don't think it has a purpose, but this is where I, where I think it goes. Like I said, if I'm wrong, you can let me know in the comments. And I do not claim to be a mechanic. I just do this stuff for fun. So that's how you do it. Make sure you grease both sides of your pads and then uh, you're gonna have to grease the pins too, just so that the pads move freely in the caliper. And yeah. All right, now that we got all the hardware in, we're gonna be torquing down the bracket bolts. So they're 17 millimeter bolts. You torque them down to 65 foot pounds of torque. All right, now we're going to bleed the brakes so when you bleed the brakes, you're gonna start with the caliper that's furthest away from the master cylinder. We got the Chris Fix bleeder kit with a quarter inch uh, plastic tubing and a Powerade bottle. The Montero caliper has a, an eight uh, millimeter bleeder screw. So crack it open, press the brakes, and then 
we close it again and then just keep going until you see no air bubbles and then we're gonna move on to the next one all right go ahead and press the brakes Yeah, press it again. Okay, press it down. Heart is to press. All right, one more. Hold it. Hold it. I run up. All right, go ahead and press and hold. Hold it. All right, you're good. Run up. Yep. Alright. Alright, go ahead and press. Right. Yep, let up. Press again. Let up. And press and hold. Alright. Alright, guys, so. After bleeding the brakes, make sure you do the brake pad and rotor braking procedure. Uh, since these are performance brake pads and rotors, uh, there's instructions on what to do on bringing them in. Uh, so, I'm gonna put the wheels back on and go ahead and do that. All right, so to break in the new pads and rotors, you got to do five aggressive decelerations from 40 to 10 miles per hour, and then five moderate decelerations from 35 to 5 and then just driving around constantly for, for five minutes without using your brakes it's pretty hard to do that unless like you like go to a track or like go to like like a road where there's like barely any traffic which i was able to do it because there's a road by my house by the cemetery that's doesn't have much traffic flow to it but yeah that's how you change the rear pads and rotors and calipers on a 2002 Mitsubishi Montero Sport. I'll leave links in the description for all the parts I bought. They're pretty much all power stop and I got them all from AutoZone. I am not sponsored by AutoZone. But AutoZone, if you want to sponsor me, that'd be cool. If you like the video, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Peace. Alright guys, so after bleeding the brakes, make sure you do the brake pad and rotor proceed uh, procedure brake <laughs> <Bert Kershaw. laughs> Chrysler